All right, so the next one is going to be um, being empathetic to your training partners. Now this seems kind of weird because the natural mentality of sports are, um, you know, the uh, like cream rises to the top or iron sharpens iron, things like that. And it's very true, iron does sharpen iron, but uh, like empathetic, uh, <laughs> I wanna say like empathetic iron, but that's wrong. Um, basically the the idea of having empathy for somebody else if you're a blue belt and uh, you know white belts coming in and they have no idea what they're doing um, and you just totally smash them all the time it's not very empathetic towards them and it's not going to help you all the time as well um, so be willing to to help those people and uh, as a, a white belt maybe you're uh, naturally athletically gifted or you're stronger or whatever um, try to be very um, aware of, of the way that that guy's training and try to help them as much as possible that doesn't mean that you can't submit them a bunch um, what I'm trying to say is be very um, wary of their mental state uh, when you're training with them as well so if you're going with them and you can tell that they're clearly frustrated or maybe they're pissed off or they're angry or whatever um, be uh, cognitive of that and try to be, um, like you said, receptive to that and try to help them uh, if you can. Uh, the reason being is that you'll, <clears throat> one thing you'll find is if you're a newer student and you're constantly just trying to kill everybody and go 100% and do everything like that, um, you're not going to have any training partners. And that's the same way as, uh, you know, blue, purple, brown, black. Having been to many gyms before, um, and trained at uh, other gyms, I will tell you that the as soon as you get labeled as either a spaz, um, you know, going crazy all the time, or a jerk, um, you're not going to have a lot of training partners. That doesn't mean that like you and another guy that you've trained with for a long time can't be you know, just smash heads completely the entire time and be super um, uh, competitive towards each other. But you have to establish that mindset of okay, this is what we're going to do. And if your friend breaks that day and he's just, you know, down, you need to help him um, because if you don't, what's going to happen is a lot of times he will leave and then you've lost a training partner that is a really good asset to you. Um, they actually, if you look at a, a study up, um, they call it super chicken, but I can't remember the, the name of it, is they actually took um, a group of chickens and they said, okay, um, we're going to try to make the best uh, chickens out of this uh, this group um, you know whoever can lay kind of the most eggs things like that and they kept um, drilling it down into smaller and smaller and smaller groups um, and essentially what happened is at, at the end once they got all these chickens that were you know laying the most eggs and things like that they ended up all killing themselves uh, because of that you know just kind of idea of what they call the, the super chicken where um, they're always fighting for dominance and so with doing that, they essentially kind of destroy themselves. And you'll see this a lot of times in, in gyms. I mean, look at all uh, MMA gyms from um, past times where, you know, big gyms like, uh, uh, well, actually, I, I won't mention any gyms, but I'm, I'm sure that you can probably think of major gyms out there that were at one time very successful or sports figures, like sports teams that were very successful. And then due to having essentially too much talent on there, um, blew up and that's kind of the the way that you run into there if you can remain empathetic and again this doesn't mean that you're always like super soft and nice and everything uh, like by all means that's not what I'm saying because I go out uh, and uh, when I train some with certain training partners I go hundred percent and I'm trying to go as hard as I can uh, but I will guarantee that those guys know exactly that that's the mindset and neither one of us are gonna get angry about it um, because we both know that that's what we're getting in for and we know what that's uh, what we need. Um, but on the other end, like I said, make for sure that you're um, aware of your training partners. Um, I shouldn't say like, uh, I'm going to say mental state, uh, but you, I mean, you don't need to know everything. But, uh, you know, as an adult, you can clearly tell when somebody's either frustrated, sad, whatever, um, things like that. So make for sure that you know as if you were to submit them or um you know be uh really rough on them whatever 
that you're taking that in account and then either talking to them afterwards or easing up on it a little bit and then working purely on technique rather than competitiveness. Um, it'll, it'll make for a, a lot better uh, gym atmosphere and it'll make for a lot better um, crew basically uh, for you to train with just because uh, the more that you go um, crazy with a lot of pe folks, the less people you'll have and, and you know, you'll tell yourself, well, these guys just don't want to train. They're all, uh, you know, wussies, whatever. But at the same time, like that, that can only last for so long. I mean, that's take it from a guy that's been doing it for 15 years that is um, pretty much hurt every time you wake up in the morning. You, you can only do that for so long. So there, there needs to be, um, and on the other end, um, you're, you're putting yourself at risk and you're putting others at risk um, of injury. So. Um, be very empathetic uh, to your training partners and realize sometimes that they're, they're either still learning or maybe they're having a rough day um, or you know, maybe they do want to go really hard that day. That doesn't necessarily mean that it always has to be soft. Maybe you just say, um, hey, I want to go really hard that day and you say, okay. But then at that same time, you have to understand that that's what you're getting yourself into.